Hey, my name's Sean from Days We Spend, and I'm gonna share eight of my favorite travel essentials that I pack for really long trips, like the one I'm currently on in Europe right now. So let's just dive into it. These are my eight slow travel essentials for almost any trip. Dancing early. Item number one is a gallium nitride charger. This one is from Minx. It has three ports, two USB-C, one USB-A. It's a 66 watt charger, which means it is strong enough to charge my laptop. And it's also smart enough to charge any other device, even really small wattage devices. So you can charge earbuds, you can charge your phone, you can charge a Kindle. It's really lightweight, but the reason that I highly recommend it is that the footprint is tiny. So it has an American port built into it that flips out of the way. So I use this when I'm back home in the States. It comes with three different adapters. So you can use the adapter for the destination you're going. Slot it on. This is everything you need to charge all of your devices in a really small footprint. But if you're traveling with a partner or a friend or you have a ton of stuff, this is a really, really good alternative solution. This is from Rav Power. This is a gallium nitride product as well. Uh, it's a charging cube, charging brick, whatever you want to call it. It has four ports, two USB-C, two USB-A. The reason that you might like this instead of the smaller charging brick is this long cable extension. In Europe, a lot of these buildings are hundreds of years old, so when they added electricity, the outlets can be at really strange places, way up high or you know, super far away from anything that makes sense. So you might not be able to plug in your heavy laptop brick, which is why this is great. You, you do need an adapter for this to work in Europe or somewhere else while you're traveling, but this adapter has extra USB ports. So this is like six charging devices. You don't have a lot of weight in the outlet. You have a lot more room to reach a table, to reach your bedside, whatever you need to do. And it all folds up and travels pretty well. So it's not nearly as light as the Minx solution, but it's an excellent alternative. Number two, the carabiner. You're gonna use a carabiner a lot when you travel. I typically use it at the beach or when I'm uh, doing some hiking. If I wanna attach something to my day bag, I have another smaller carabiner and it's great for keeping your keys together as you travel. Like this big weird iron key. Simple thing, but bring a carabiner. Number three on the list is a merino wool shirt. Actually, it's three merino wool shirts. So I really, really love Unbound Merino. This is not sponsored or anything, I just think they're awesome. This is a medium that I'm wearing, fits pretty well. I also have a large and another medium. Having three really good shirts that can be worn for multiple days at a time, that aren't gonna stink, that aren't gonna wrinkle, it really reduces the amount of clothing that you need to bring, which makes your bag really light. I know they are quite expensive, but they will pay for themselves especially if you're traveling a lot. So invest in at least one Merino shirt, more if you can, but you only need two or three. And when you pack only a few really good t-shirts, you have room in your bag to buy really stupid crap like this cool novelty shirt I got. It has a real zipper and you can keep snacks in there. This is another shirt that I think is an absolute travel essential. This is from Topo. This is a shirt jacket. This particular model is the Topo Breaker shirt jacket. Um, it's kind of a lightweight, water resistant, but comfortable fabric. It's got two chest pockets, one here and a zipper pocket. But the reason I love this thing so much is the two shirt sort of pockets. I love this shirt, it's lightweight. It's pretty cool looking again, in my opinion, but it's very functional. I've worn this in a light rain. I've worn this on a hike. You can pop the collar for sun protection, or if you want to look like Bonzi. It's got pop snaps, which I think are really great. I'm traveling mostly in spring and summer, so it's a lightweight layer that doesn't take up a lot of room in my bag. I can also wear it when it's relatively warm. I wouldn't wear this in a heat wave, but it can keep the sun off your skin. Really good for travel days, really good for flights. Topo cycles over their products often, so the breaker jacket might not be available. They have something similar called the dual shirt right now, but check their website for something with pockets. 
Next on the list is a water bottle. Now I know a lot of people have favorites. I've opted for a lightweight version. I use the Vapor sort of collapsible foldable water bottle because it fits in your bag. It can fit in a side pocket really easily. It weighs almost nothing when it's not full of water. The carabiner is really useful for when you're backpacking if you need to just clip it to something on the go. Is it perfect? No, I mean, it's still sort of a, a relatively flimsy bottle, but it stands up when it's full. It collapses, it fits your bag really well, kind of molds to the shape of your bag so it doesn't bump out really far. And I think it's a great addition. I mean, it's not gonna last for more than a couple years. So if you really, really love having a heavier insulated water bottle, this is not for you, but for me it's perfect. So this next item is something that I don't normally pack, um, but this has sort of changed that, and it is flat pack sunglasses. Look at that. Look, I can still see you. These are from a French company called News, N-O-O-Z, and they basically work by like, you kind of pinch the bridge, they come out of this really small, hard, protected case, and you put them on. I think they look pretty darn good. Again, uh, they are stylish enough for me, but the, re the main reason I love them is because they're really lightweight, they're polarized, so they protect your eyes, but I can't break them. I'm really, really hard on my gear. I break stuff all the time. I rip things, I tear things. I've broken a lot of sunglasses over the years just by doing dumb crap, like sitting on them or shoving them in my bag and then not realizing it, which is why I love these so much. And you can just put them in a pocket, like, whoop. That was nothing. The one thing I don't love about these glasses, and I, I think it has to do with the flat design, is that oftentimes you'll get a little bit of a glare, especially if the sun is kind of to the side or behind you. They don't wrap, so they don't protect you from every angle. Um, so when you're driving or biking, that can be a bit of a distraction. So keep that in mind. Again, they're not perfect, but they're, borderline indestructible, which is why I really enjoy them. Speaking of taking care of yourself in the sun, this is my hat. This is from Sunday Afternoons, which is an American brand. Um, they're known for a lot of outdoor sort of wet and wild gear. I like this hat a lot. It's really lightweight. It's really malleable. Like the bill is easy to fold. You can crinkle it up. You can put it in your pocket. It breathes fairly well, but there's no perforations on the top. But again, I've kicked the crap out of this thing. There's salt all over the back because I take it in the ocean sometimes or if we're tubing around in the salt water, which we are here in Croatia. It looks good, it feels good, it keeps the sun off my face, but it also comes with a secret additional part, which is the neck flap. Oh God, I look cool right now. Yeah, this looks ridiculous. I get what I look like. But when you're hiking or you're kayaking or you're river rafting or you're just walking around a really hot place, it's really nice to have something to keep the sun off your neck and your ears. As long as you just get over the fact that you're a guy wearing a flap on the back of your hat, it's an amazing addition. And when you get back to normal people and you don't wanna look like a lunatic, you snap it off and you've got yourself a really regular stylish looking hat. Last, but not least is uh, the final weapon in my arsenal against the sun. My fighting the sun is all good sunscreen butter. So this is SPF 50 plus broad spectrum sunscreen. It's biodegradable, reef friendly. It's a really good company. They're from uh, California, San Luis Obispo area. They've been making really great products for a long time. I highly recommend them just as an overall brand. But in particular, I think that this sun butter is just the way to go. So these little packets last for a surprising amount of time. All that's the stuff. And you wouldn't want to use this over your whole body, but we use it on our face when we go to the beach, when we go hiking. Uh, it's, it's a great addition to our kit. I put way too much on just now, which is just gonna look cool. So I actually carry two versions of this. I carry the white zinc that you're seeing here. All that's the stuff. Let's get, it, let's get it rubbed in there real good. And that's what your face looks like with the white sink. Not awesome, but safe. The other option though is the tinted version, which honestly kind of looks like foundation. So like when I put this one on, where'd it go? Oh, what? It's just safe sunscreen. 
and you look like you have a normal face, not like a psychopath. So, sink here, blended one there. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but there you go. These little guys last forever. They're from a great company. And if you get the tinted one, you won't look like a lunatic if you're walking around a city, which is nice. So obviously you could bring a ton of other things. I, I have other things in my bag that I really love. I have a Kindle, you know, I have earbuds. But this was focusing on just a few items that are like surprisingly useful almost everywhere, almost every day. I've included some links to the products so you can check them out if you want, but that's how I pack for long-term travel. And I totally suggest that you pick up some of this stuff. It's great. Leave a comment below if you have any pieces of gear that you absolutely love that I need to know about. I would love to know about them. And uh, if you have any questions about anything I've talked about, go ahead and jump down in there. I'll, I'll happily answer those about like, sizing or price or you know different things. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you want some more gear reviews like this. If this is your jam, let me know. Now I gotta go pack all this stuff up and hit the road again. Thanks.